Katusha was one of the most glamorous and iconic models of her time. Her career spanned many years, during which she graced numerous magazine covers and walked the runway for many prominent designers. With striking features and a statuesque build, Katusha had a unique and unforgettable aesthetic. Her triangular silhouette, defined by her broad shoulders and narrow waist, perfectly complemented the geometric fashion of the late 1980s. Her striking beauty was captured on the covers of countless magazines, cementing her status as a fashion icon. In addition to her stunning looks, Katusha was also known for her fierce determination and talent. She worked with a number of prominent designers, including Jules Francois, Thierry Mugler, Christian Lacroix, Chloe, Givenchy, Chanel, and Dior. Her elegant and graceful walk made her a favorite among designers and audiences alike. And throughout her career, Katusha achieved many notable accomplishments. She was a successor to Monia as Yves Saint Laurent's ebony princess and became known as his muse. She remained one of the best known models in France and an icon in Guinea. In addition to her work in fashion, Katusha also hosted the French language television program Prince Next Top Model and starred in the film Ramata. Despite her many achievements, Katusha's parents were initially disappointed in her decision to pursue modeling instead of attending university. She recalled telling them, and I'd quote, I'd be famous, that I'd be a big star, and they said that I'd end up a whore. I was lucky, tremendously lucky, end quote, and lucky she was. Was, as her talent and her hard work led her to become one of the most successful and well-respected models of her time. In addition to her many accomplishments in the fashion world, Katusha was also a writer and activist. She used her platform to speak out against violence against women and wrote a book about her experiences as a model titled Katusha in my own words. Katusha's relationship with Yves Saint Laurent was one of the highlights of her career. She became his muse thanks to her unique beauty and captivating presence. She inspired many of his designs and was a frequent collaborator throughout his career. With all this glamour, Katusha lived a very tragic life and had a very tragic ending. She was a victim of female circumcision at a young age, separated from her family, sent away to live with a remote uncle who took advantage of her. She was forced to marry a young man who she became pregnant by at 17 and two years later she made off to Paris with another boyfriend abandoning her young daughter to her care of her parents and later becoming the glamorous model we know today who eventually was found lifeless in the French River. We're gonna get into all of this and more but first hey friend welcome to my channel Korean Allude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars throughout history. If you're not yet subscribed please be sure to do so and if you're already subscribed please turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload. Now without further ado let's get into this video. Now before we get into her child I want you guys to know that her favorite color was brown and black according to designers that she's worked with so leave a brown and black heart in the comments for her. Now her story resonates with me so deeply she was requested by one of my longtime subscribers and I was very pleasantly surprised that she was requested because not too many people request Katusha. I've heard of her before but didn't quite know too much about her so I was very excited to do research of her especially because she's from Guinea where, where I told you guys I am Haitian and about 90% of Haitians came from Guinea or how we pronounce it in Haiti Guinea <laughs> so we're from Guinea and that is my ancestral home upon finding out all of this information I definitely was looking into prominent figures from Guinea that I felt like I should be educated about and since you know I love supermodels she is one of those people that was at the top of my list she is just very beautiful to me her bone structure she reminded me a lot of Iman and I did a breakdown for Iman also which I'll link in the comment section and in the end screens in the end cards she has these nice shoulders she looked like a drawing you know when they draw sketches designers draw sketches for outfits this is one of the reason why Yves Saint Laurent loved her so much and fashion designers wanted to work with her so much is because she had the physique of the drawings that they would do for sketches for the outfits and she was loved globally also especially in Japan for some reason the Japanese loved Katusha and she's just a global sensation but I know not too many people have heard of her and she was a beautiful soul who just had it really really rough so her story will resonate with you and I will tell you that there is trigger warning on this video because we will discuss some sensitive topics so if you're squirmy this is your warning but 
Make sure if you're gonna leave, leave a brown and black heart in the comment section and help boost us through the algorithm. Now let's go into her childhood. Unfortunately, I could not find any photos of her as a child. Her life for the most part is pretty private, but I do encourage people to go out and get her memoir. We're gonna talk a little bit more about her memoir later on in this video. It is very, oh my goodness. It's not on Audible anywhere, but you can order it from Amazon or go look at your local bookstore. They might have it, okay? So like Iman, the ambassador's daughter from Somalia, who became a major face of the 1970s, Katusha came from a sophisticated background as well. Katusha was born on October 23rd, 1960, and her father was a prominent African historian, author, and playwright, and her mother was a French Guinean woman, where I couldn't find any information on her mother's name. Katusha grew up speaking both French and the Malinke language, and she was proud of her African heritage. However, her childhood was not all sunshine and rainbows. At the age of nine, her mother deceived her into undergoing female genital mutilation, which was a local custom in Guinea. In her autobiography, De Ma Chère, In My Flesh, she described a pleasant, privileged childhood that ended when she was nine. Her French-educated mother claimed to be taking her to the cinema to see the Beatles, film help but in fact surrendered katusha for genital mutilation it was placed in a filthy conditions and without any anesthetics according to the local customs and she was traumatized this traumatic experience affected katusha deeply she spoke about it later in her life as a prominent activist against female genital mutilation when katusha was forced into exile with her family due to her father's conflict with the guinean president they first went to mali and then later settled in senegal the flight was organized organized in outmost secrecy, okay? Katusha was kidnapped, as she quoted, by an elderly aunt who dragged her towards the airport departure door. And guess what? She wasn't kidnapped in secret, right? Her mother was right there witnessing it all, and to her, she saw it as a kidnap. So she couldn't understand why her mother, instead of helping her, smacked her across the head, right? She hadn't been told that she was leaving the country for her own good and hoped to be reunited with her parents later. None of it made sense to her. So she says, I was dragged away by the old hag and a plane that closed its doors behind me like a safe or a tomb. After my mutilation, this kidnapping was like a second death to me, end quote. And this is a thing with parents who do not communicate with their kids. Like Katusha said, had her mother communicated with her what was going on, she probably wouldn't have been as traumatized, but her mother didn't say anything to her. Her father was, you know, hiding out, afraid for his life, and she was just dragged by her aunt away, and she just felt like, who is this woman? Why am I getting dragged away? Like, what is going on? And this is why you should communicate with your children when there's gonna be major changes, okay? It may be that her mother had no choice and suffered a lot herself, if not more, from the rough treatment inflicted on her beloved daughter, but her mother probably went through similar things also in her life and just, you know, was just toughened and hardened by it. But the young girl didn't understand the reasons behind the, all the things that were happening to her to shelter her from even worse socio-political you know, issues, often lethal. These unsettling experiences scarred her physically and psychologically for life. Life in Bamako, where she landed after abruptly leaving Guinea, only added insult to injury. She found herself in a foreign environment, abandoned and subjected to sensual abuse. At the age of 12, she was touched by one of her uncles without her permission, if you catch my drift, and it just was, again, another source of trauma for her. It took four years for the whole family to escape from Conakry and be reunited in Dhaka. However, by then, Katusha was a teenager full of anger and resentment yearning for freedom. Her relationship with her mother grew very strained, obviously, and her attitude towards her father was at its lowest point. And she said, as I became a young woman, I could no longer bear the authority of the very person who didn't protect me. I had only one desire to leave from my mother, my family, and my country, end quote. Thus began a life of truancy, plagued by family conflicts and rebellious behavior. Katusha's passion for clothes and fashion only worsened her relationship with her family. Her parents was very mad when she became pregnant at the age of 17. They quickly married her off to preserve the family honor, but Katusha had no interest in raising a child. So she left her daughter with her husband's family. She had different plans with her friend and lover, Alan, which were quite simple. Seize the first opportunity to go to Paris and become a fashion model. Growing up, Katusha 
was interested in fashion and modeling and this passion would eventually lead to her to becoming a successful model in Europe. However, she never forgot her African roots and often spoke out against the harmful effects of Western beauty standards on African women. Her modeling career quickly took off when she moved to Paris in the early 1980s after being inspired by a non-white face on the cover of Essence magazine. Her first break came when Jules Francois Crahe, a designer at Lenvin, hired her as a fitting model, which led to her being elevated by Mugler to the catwalk. The late 1980s proved to be the perfect era for Katusha. It proved to be the perfect era for her to strut her stuff with her unique triangular silhouette that narrowed from the shoulders perfectly matching the geometries of the time. As one of the most sought after model of the time, she was a hit on the runways for designers such as Christian Lacroix, Chloe, Givenchy, Chanel, and Dior. Despite Katusha's modeling career, she also pursued other interests that include writing and humanitarian work. She penned a critically acclaimed memoir titled Katusha in My Flesh, where she shared her experience and struggles as a model in a predominantly white industry. She also founded the charity KPLCE, which aims to empower African women economically and socially. However, it was her relationship with designer Yves Saint Laurent that remains one of the most significant. As we said, she was his ebony princess and his muse. Katusha may have faced adversity from her parents, but she refused to let anyone stifle her dreams. Instead, she blazed a trail in the fashion industry, becoming one of the most recognizable and accomplished models of her time. Her legacy as a model and humanitarian continues to inspire young women around the world. Although Katusha said that she avoided going to New York because the substance temptation there was so strong, she admitted in her book that she had misused illicit substances as well as alcohol and had had bouts of mental illnesses at one point she was declared unfit to care for her daughter Amy and her two younger children. She became aware that the pain and fear of her childhood had made her self-destructive and yet had constructed her stage presence. She said, and I quote, I embodied the most arrogant and admired kind of femininity. I, who was supposed to be diminished, she wrote. She wrote in her memoir also, life became like an endless party when I, when I became a model, vain and exciting. I could spend a full week without sleeping in my bed. And if I felt like taking a new boyfriend, I just had to pick and choose among the numerous young playboys rolling in money and who gravitated permanently around us, looking for new adventure. Sumptuous bunches of flowers, gifts, champagne, yachts, private jets, nothing was too extravagant in order to seduce us, end quote. Real friends were few and far between, and a throng of acquaintances living at her expense were fleecing her. She seemed not to care, but her reckless attitude towards money had long-lasting effects on her life. The last few chapters of Katusha's autobiography tell the story of a woman who has lost pretty much everything she owned, but one who has kept an unaltered passion for the world of fashion. Katusha left modeling in 1994, although she was always willing to return for St. Laurent or a gala such as the 1998 World Cup ceremonies in Paris, and founded a campaign against genital mutilation, returning to Senegal to try to persuade women to give up the practice. But Katusha's life was cut short when she drowned in the River Seine in 2008, the same year her mentor Yves Saint Laurent passed away. So she must have been very saddened by that. Her body, which a passerby spotted under a bridge, had no marks that suggested she had been attacked. She fell into the water and went straight to the bottom, a source close to the investigation said. Her family filed a legal complaint with, with an investigating judge saying they suspect her death was a, you know, foul play, the official said. But nothing have shown that it was foul play. But a lot of people said she probably wanted to you know end it because she did suffer with a lot of mental illness but we will never know we will never know it's just so sad to see how her life ended she is just oh, so beautiful and had a lot of good work that she was doing and it's just very strange how it ended like that i want you guys to don't forget to leave a brown and black heart in the comments for her and some kind words and also thumbs up this video if you watch it and also if you like the music you listen to the link is in the description support my brother i'm going to leave a little tribute to her towards the of this video on some of her most iconic fashion moments enjoy and i'll see you guys on the next video i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time